What's going on folks? Now every now and then I like to make a video that focuses on preparedness gear. With this video, I'm gonna focus on gear that would be very useful in an emergency or an SHTF scenario. And as always with my videos, I like to cover a broad range of all the topics because in this kind of situation, you need all your bases covered. For example, it doesn't do too much if you have a lot of food, but you don't have water, shelter, medical, fire, you get the idea. Thinking too small could leave critical elements of preparedness at the wayside. And as always, I'll leave a few of my favorite options in the description below if you're interested in checking them out. The best part of these videos is watching you all jump in and sharing your ideas, so use the comment section to help each other out. And if you like the video, smash that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump in. Now, if you plan to do anything in the dark, you're gonna to need to think hard about lighting. There are tons of battery operated lights and flashlights out there, so it could be really mind boggling and hard to pick. If you haven't already, you might wanna consider some kind of a backup solar light. So these two I've actually had on the outside of my home for probably three to four years now. These solar lights can be pretty cheap. They can light up a doorway or a walkway from your garage to your house, for example. Something like this will allow you to work outside once it starts to get dark out, and then you could bring the light inside too if you wanted. Leave it outside during the day, let it charge, let the sun do its thing. There's really no extra action on your part to take if you leave these outside. Plus, if you're wondering, most of these are motion censored anyway, so if there's no motion, the light's not gonna turn on and waste battery. And if you put them outside your home, it will add to your home security. No, it's not going to stop an intruder in his tracks if he was really determined to get inside. There's other things to deal with that, but it will act as a basic deterrent device. Now, when thinking about shelter, it might be easy to picture a tent or a small shed. But it doesn't have to be. It could be as simple as a wool blanket or a tarp. Keeping a buffer between you and the elements in any kind of a survival situation is the most important thing to consider. Hypothermia can kill you a lot faster than dehydration. Multiple forms of shelter should be the top on your list. When I think of a shelter, I think first of something like this wool blanket or a tarp. With this setup here, I would be able to, with a little bit of cordage, set this up, have something over my head to protect myself from the elements, and have this wool blanket to keep me warm if it was chilly out. As backups to these, I would consider a bivy or sleeping bag bivy and emergency mylar blankets. Those are super cheap. They're great to have around as a backup of a backup. And you can see these options here for shelter. They're not gonna take up a lot of space. So if you don't mind having a tarp and not being totally surrounded, keeping the bugs off you, but it's keeping the elements at bay, you might wanna consider just having a basic setup like this, and you're not gonna spend a fortune either. For emergency blankets, they're gonna be great because you can get a ton of them for a much cheaper price. You can have a couple of those in any kind of bag that you take out or put in your car just in case. Now, one of my favorite preparedness items is the Kelly Kettle, AKA the tank. Now that's my name for it, so don't go searching on the interwebs, you're not gonna find it. And this thing is nearly indestructible, and it hits on a couple of critical survival needs. It's essentially a rocket stove, an extremely efficient type of stove that is fueled by biomass, which is literally everywhere if you have any form of plant life nearby. And it will cook your food, while you're boiling your water and keeping you warm if you're outside. Don't use this inside, that's not what it's meant for. Now, in my opinion, everybody should have some type of rocket stove. It doesn't have to be the Kelly Kettle, but it's a super efficient stove. You can have portable ones that fold down flat, or you could just have one that's already built and pull it out if you ever needed it. Now, depending on which article you read, contaminated water kills hundreds of thousands to millions of people every single year. Clean water is absolutely critical to have in any kind of a situation. I don't care if there was a local power outage that took out your well or it's SHTF, you need clean water. If you decide to have backups of any kind of emergency preparedness item, I would urge it to be water filtration and purification. Now, personally, I keep a few of these Sawyer minis laying around as my filtration. This is not going to take out viruses. It's not going to purify the water. I would use other methods like UV light or water tablets to take care of that and make it totally potable. So this little guy is gonna take out most of the nasties in your water, except as I said, for virus. It's a 0.1 micron filter. It's not gonna take out everything. And that's not gonna be a huge deal if you're living in certain parts of the world, unless things got really bad. So it's important to think of water filtration and purification to truly make your water potable. Now, once you have clean water, you're gonna want a way to store it and ideally keep it portable. With a container like this, you would be able to also purify water by boiling it over a fire. Now there's tons of containers out there, but I always come back to a single wall steel container like this Nalgene. It doesn't have to be Nalgene, but a container like this just makes it super versatile. I'm able to use it for my daily drinking, take it camping, and it's perfect for like a survival situation. I'd be able to boil water, cook some food in it too. Now, if I wanted to cook a serious amount of food and this cup right here isn't gonna do it, I would go to something like this stowaway pot. 
I've had these for over a decade. This is a brand new one. I usually use the 1.1 liter. So this one's brand new, never had to use it. This goes with the rest of my gear. The single wall container is critical. Do not get the double layer or the insulated. Unless you drill a hole in it, it could explode if you try to put this over a fire. Now you may not use cordage on a daily basis except for maybe tying your shoes, but if you plan on hanging off a cliff or surviving on a deserted island like Tom Hanks, you know the stuff you're likely to encounter in a typical day. And if he used a better knot, Wilson probably wouldn't have floated away into the ocean, I'm just saying. Wilson! Wilson! Seriously though, if you want to lash anything together or build the shelter, for example, you're going to want to have at least some kind of 550 paracord laying around. Now this is a quarter inch rope and I like to have at least 100 feet of this laying around just in case because the 550 paracord, it's going to be great for a lot of things, but sometimes you need something a little more heavy duty. And if you think you're going to go through a lot of this stuff, which it is pretty easy to go through, think about getting a spool of paracord instead of just a hank like this. You'll be able to store more of it that way. Now you'll inevitably need a way to create a spark. You'll need a fire to either keep warm, to cook food, to boil water in an emergency situation. And many people just rely on Bic lighters. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can buy a ton of them, keep them in the original packaging. They're easy to store. They're not fumbling around in a bag. One thing that can happen is that they can get activated and let the fuel out. And that's not good if it's something, if it's rustling around in a backpack, for example. So just keep that in mind. I like to keep a few of these refillable lighters around. Just pop that out and you can fill it from the bottom. These are gonna be great. You know, I have Bic lighters as well. But on top of this, I'm gonna have ferro rods. And ferro rods are great to have around because depending on the thickness, you can get 8,000 to 35,000 strikes out of this thing. Now, one strike doesn't mean one fire, so you're not gonna get 35,000 fires. It's gonna depend on your skill using one of these, plus obviously the fire material, the tinder you're using, is it dry? But you know how it goes. Two is one, one is none. It's great to have multiple options to create a spark. A good blade will make or break you in a survival situation. I personally prefer full tang blades 90% of the time, especially when I'm going out and I'm using it for harder tasks like batoning wood. And I don't use my knives for this, but if I had to, I could use it to pry something, for example. And there are many makes and models out there. I'm not gonna get into the super debated topic here. All I'm gonna say is you can find very affordable options with the Mora knife, and I also have brands like Cold Steel, Essie, you've got Benchmade as well if you wanna spend a lot of money, but you don't need to. So full tang, at least have a blade or two that is full tang, because you're gonna have the strength, you're gonna have the durability, you're gonna be able to do a lot more, especially with bushcraft tasks. A knife like this, which is not full tang, is gonna be great for creating a bird's nest or creating little tools out of wood, right? You're gonna be able to use this for a lot of stuff if you go camping or in a survival situation, but it's not gonna last as long when batoning and using it for the tougher tasks. You can find these for super cheap too. I'm pretty sure this one was 20 bucks when I bought it over Christmas. Now medical tends to be one of the least loved topics out there, but as we know, it's just as critical as any other. If an event was to occur, any kind of event, having basic knowledge of treating a wound or an illness will be critical to survival. Now there are basic home kits for cuts and scrapes, you have specialized eye facts, or you could have a hospital in a bag. And with any of these, you can DIY it if you really wanted to. If you know what to put into the bag, you can of course save money by putting it together yourself which would inevitably bring you closer to the topic because you're taking the time to learn what it is you're putting in the bag and hopefully how to use it. My belief on medical is take advantage of the professionals when you can and must, but there is no excuse not to know how to stop a hemorrhage or clear an airway at a bare minimum. You can always work your way up from there. Now in past videos, I've covered how to build this exact IFAC, by the way, I keep this in my vehicle. So I'm not gonna cover the details here. I don't wanna make the video too long. I'll include the playlist, I'll plug it here if you wanna see it later. Now coming in at the least portable option is the wood stove. And if you can get your hand on a home wood stove, install it and use it, you're gonna be in a really good position. You'll be able to boil water, stay warm of course, and cook food too. Plus it's a light source if you have some kind of port or window to the wood stove. Now if you don't have a way to have a home wood stove installed, I would seriously consider a portable wood stove, something like this camping stove. Now, if it makes sense to have one of these for you, you're gonna cover so many survival needs 
just by having it and of course knowing how to use it if there was a power outage or some more serious event was to take place. Now obviously there are thousands of other items I could have added to this list too. There's not enough hours in the day to cover them all. But a video like this gives you a baseline for all the major survival topics like shelter, food, water, and medical. And if you want to add to the list that I covered here, please share it in the comments. Getting some gear and putting it in a closet isn't going to do you much good. Go outside with it, break it out of the box, test it out, build your skills, build some muscle memory. So in the event that something was to happen, you have some experience doing this already. The more repetitions you get in, the more practice, the more muscle memory you're gonna create. And if there's even a hint of worry about staying warm this winter, check out this video that I recently made. I cover 25 topics in 15 minutes on how to stay warm in a power outage. If you made it this far, you folks are amazing. As always, I'll catch you on the next one. Stay safe and stay practical.